Boys and my ducks and drakes, welcome to the Crowded Lake. Today we're reading chapters 5 and 6 of New Rules, a Sandra Sides fanfic by Becca911 on Wattpad. If you'd like to check out any of her works or her profile or this book, the links are in the description below for that. Please support the author. These books are literally my favorite fanfiction ever. Oh my goodness. So, um, with that being said... There is a Google form in the description below where you could recommend fix for me to read in the future. That'd be much appreciated. Any fandom written by everyone, uh, not everyone, but by anyone. And it could be from anything, not just Wattpad. So like Tumblr, AO3, fanfiction.net, literally anything. It's super fun. And with that, we're going to go on to chapter five. They didn't make the video. Instead, Thomas visited his friends and family. It was both relief and a curse for Logan, as his schedule was discarded. He felt it in his chest, as if someone had struck his heart directly, which was ridiculous because that was impossible. He still found himself rubbing the area absently, as he sat and worked through some logical puzzles. It took mere hours before the numbers swam before his eyes, and he threw his pencil down on his desk. Stupid, he muttered to himself, pressing his heel of his palms into his eyes. Stupid. Well, that's not a good thing to call yourself, Patton said, and while his voice was an attempt at cheerfulness, Logan could tell his fellow side really wasn't that happy right now. Of course, morality hated conflict. Logan sighed. It was merely an observation, Patton. No need to worry. Patton's eyes were sad. I heard Virgil earlier. He said quietly. I'm sure we all heard Virgil. He shouldn't have said those things. Logan managed a bitter smile, refusing to maintain eye contact. He had every right, he said firmly. I aided in his struggles with Derek. I made him feel <laughs> his shudders were a sign that he was uncomfortable with the implication. I made him feel like an outcast and a disorder, and for that, I can never apologize enough. Patton sat on Logan's bed, looking solemn and sad and tired. The fighting between them had worn him down. None of this should have happened. I am the one to blame, Logan said calmly, ignoring Patton's protest. It's a matter of facts and logic. I was the one overly harsh to Virgil. I threatened him. I cast him aside, more so than you and Roman. I am unforgivable. I am the machine. He spat that last word violently. Logan, you're not- I am tired. Patton. Logan said, and his shoulders slumped. Thank you for your visit. Please relay my sincerest apology- Apologies and sympathies to Virgil. Lo, Patton. Logan was done. He was exhausted. Please. And maybe it was the shock of that alone, or maybe it was the weight of his voice, or maybe it was something else entirely, but Patton bowed his head and disappeared with a soft pop. For a second, there was a faintest smell of oranges. Logan stared at his half-finished Doku page and let out a very long breath. Knowledge truly was a curse, a burden. If you have any dream dreams or wish lists to fulfill, Roman's voice rung in his head and Logan scowled at himself. No, dreams were useless in his position. He was made of pure, cold logic. He was fact, not fiction. He had goals, ambitions, but he was not a dreamer. He knew reality better than anyone. But to have a dream... Logan shook his head and stared at his Togoku mo once more. He woke up with his head on his desk. There was a crick in his neck, and when he looked down at his hands, they were metallic claws. Robot. He went back to sleep with a hollow heart. When he woke fully, he was in bed, which was not where he fell asleep. His glasses were folded neatly on the bed beside him, and his tie was loosened so it would not strangle him during the night. There was the slightest trace of oranges. 
Patton, he thought. And indeed, there was a tray at the end of his bed, toast smothered in crofter's jam, and a tall glass of apple juice. Good food. Patton knew he enjoyed crofter's. There was a note with the tray, and Logan soared a moment to read it. Robin says you need to find a dream for yourself. Virgil says he's sorry. Patton. Logan just tucked the note away and ate in silence, because dreams were for children and forgiveness was for those who were worthy of it. He was neither. He was just a robot. Chapter 6 Over the next few days, Logan fell into a new schedule. He woke up exactly at 7.15 a.m., spent 15 minutes completely Sudoku's so that he was warming up his brain. Then he had breakfast, avoiding the others by simply taking the food back to his room. Then he researched and planned and did whatever was required of him until 1.15 p.m. He then ate lunch again in his room and spent the afternoons doing puzzles. Much of his energy was going directly into Thomas's brain functions and everyday thinking. Since the video had been postponed, a fact a few of his fans weren't happy about, he found that his workload had slimmed slightly, and he was free to focus more on Thomas rather than Thomas's actions. So he spent most of his free time before lunch in the control room, watching through Thomas's eyes as the man went about his day. Thomas's stresses were normal, and now that anxiety had toned it down and Roman had found balance, it seemed that his host was gonna be okay. So, why did Logan have such a bad feeling? Perhaps it was because there was a tension between him and his fellow sides. Perhaps he was too cold. Too logical. Maybe he was the one who needed to tone it down. He shivered slightly and turned away. He was logic. He shouldn't be bothered by such unruly moments of emotional self-consciousness. He was just a robot. A living calculator and dictionary and whatever else the others had deemed him. He wasn't anything more than that. So why was he being flooded with such icky thoughts? I thought I'd find you in here. Roman's voice was loud, and Logan winced at the sudden intrusion. Patton wants you in the kitchen. Will Virgil be there? He couldn't stop the question from tumbling out of his mouth, and from Princey's grim look it seemed the royal had anticipated the question. There was no bravo in Roman's voice when he said, quietly, Patton wants you two to make up. He's rather distressed by the fighting and your current mindset. Logan scowled. There was nothing wrong with my current mindset. He turned back to the monitors and stubbornly refused to look at Roman. Please send my apologies for not going. I do not wish to worsen Virgil's emotional state. I will continue to watch Thomas. I will be out for lunch if Patton wishes to speak to me. Roman heaved a big sigh, and suddenly there was a hand gripping Logan's arm. It wasn't a question. There wasn't more than one option. And then they disappeared with a soft pop, and Logan is forced to confront his greatest regret. Patton came into focus, and as soon as Logan could distinguish the faintest smackering of freckles on Morality's face, he wrenched his arm away from Roman. I did not give consent. He snapped, but Roman just shrugged it off and pulled out his phone. Please? Patton said, and his voice was trembling just slightly. You have to talk to him. You guys can't keep fighting and avoiding each other like this. I am totally open for a really good explanation, Logan, Virgil said from the table. Logan took a second to analyze his fellow side, from the false boredom in his voice to the hunch in his shoulders as he tried to bury himself in his hoodie. Virgil didn't want confrontation. Virgil hated confrontation. This was all Patton. He took a deep breath and tentatively sat before Virgil. I'm sorry, he said awkwardly, feeling strangely fidgety. I was too harsh on you during your bout with your depression. Derek, Virgil snapped. Derek, Logan amended. He glanced over at Patton, who nodded encouragingly. 
It was unstable time for all of us, and I projected my frustrations onto you and your own issues. I sincerely apologize. It sounded formal enough and covered most of what Logan felt he had to apologize for. Apologies were not his forte, and an apology like this required more than he could give. Virgil scowled and drew his shoulders back. His eyes were dark with an angry, cruel amusement, and Logan braced himself for the impact because when anxiety went off, the effects were felt all over Thomas's mind and body. Most likely, this outburst by the youngest side would confine Thomas to his bed tomorrow, simply because of the mental distress. You are unbelievable, Virgil fumed, and from behind, Logan, Patton, made a small sound of dismay. You really don't know anything about emotions, do you? To you, it's all, all, all trends and patterns, and, and you can never really connect with other emotional beings because you don't have emotions. And then came the words Logan had been waiting for all along. You are a machine. Thank you all so much for listening. We'll continue with chapter 7 and 8 next week. I am super excited for it. If you'd like, please support the author using the links in the description. You can recommend a fic from any place, from anyone, down with the Google form. I almost said Google Sheet. It's a Google form. Uh, there's also a link to my Etsy shop where you could buy cool beaded things. Sanderside's beaded things, if that's what you're interested in. But also beaded things of any fandom if you like a fandom more than this one which yeah it's pretty cool i am bad at advertising but i hope that you still consider me a coolio baroio uh there's also links to my social medias in the description below if you'd be interested in those and much like logan trying to apologize do your best